What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the most important NYCFC talk show. It's time for another group therapy session of the Dudes in Blue. Uh, it's episode 119. Thanks so much for hanging out with us. I'm your host, Joe Amato, and alongside me, as always, Antonino. Dude, what's up? Oh, boy, it's going to be a fun episode tonight. Yeah. Yeah, we got we got some stuff to talk about. Uh, obviously, NYCFC falling to Philly in Philly over the weekend. Um, with the, the, like, there's so much within that game alone that we can that we can go over. We got the the final Hudson River Derby of the of the season upcoming on Wednesday night. We're missing a lot of guys. We got that to talk about. We got David Villa to talk about. We've got, dude, I don't know where to start. How about this? Let's start here. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Dudes in Blue. It's very, very easy. I just want to say hi to a couple of our loyal Dudes in Blue Nation listeners. We got Jorge checking in. Zoran, what's going on? Jamal, what's up? Joey is coming from Yosemite National Park. This dude is like, he's everywhere. He was in, he was at the LAFC match last week, which by the way, thank you for sporting the Dudes in Blue look. Uh, Christian Smith is coming at us with the notification squad preparing for some serious anger. And Andres Los Caballeros en Azul. Long time no see, my friend. Welcome back. Dude, I just hands in the air, just like NYCFC. Roddy Russell joining us as well. What's up, Roddy? Uh, and if you're, if you're listening on the audio podcast, thanks so much for joining us. So. Where do we want to begin with this absolute um, – I don't want to say absolute atrocity, but but almost an entire atrocity that was NYCFC against Philly because the first half wasn't terrible. A lot of chances, not a lot of quality, not a lot of conversion, but a lot of chances on both ends. Yeah, uh, again, it, it when both teams tend to play a little bit more on the sloppy side, it's it, – it's, Easier to say, okay, one team's playing better than the other because a couple of good things. But overall, it really was not a great half from either side. Um, just our scoring chances kind of made it look that way. Uh, and again, some of those scoring chances were grade A, top shelf, need to be buried in the back of the net. It, it's just, it, it's textbook. It's got to be clinical at this point, this late in the year. The ball has to get in the back of the net. Uh, Maxi, for some reason, He's had a majority of chances one on one with the keeper or just wide open, pick your shot, and he just can't put it in the back of the net. Now, he's done it a fair share of times, yes, but I mean, there's just been some glaring opportunities where he's been so wide open and just can't do it. Um, well, Blake made, Blake made a good stop, uh, yeah. on the first opportunity, and then he just, he just couldn't put it on frame. Stop he was one on, yeah. it was horrible. It's just, uh, I, uh, first half, tough. But, uh, again, some positives to take away. You know, they had the scoring chances. You thought the second half was going to be that way, and it just was the complete opposite. It was, it opposite. was just nine guys defending in their own third of the field for a majority of the time. Um, passes were not finding people. Uh, uh, any opportunity that was had, that, that last pass that would have led to a goal or a goal scoring opportunity end up being deflected or given away or too far or it's just – it was almost like anything that could have gone wrong went wrong in that second half. Just just about, and right up to the last second, pretty much. You know, it was just, um, yeah, I mean, uh, Roddy Russell coming in with the hot take here. Missed opportunities in the first half, poor defending in the second, textbook losing. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much what it was. I mean, yeah. you know, David Villa had essentially an open net that he just totally flubbed the shot on in the first half, and it, it was just... There was no quality to this game whatsoever. And, I and, and dude, I mentioned last week, I was like, I don't want this Philly game to be a trap game, knowing that there's Wednesday to get the Derby again. This turned into essentially what that was in that we just let Philly just ransack us, right? I mean, it was just – yeah. Um, and, and honestly, dude, if not for if not for Philly missing their chances and Sean Johnson making a save or two, that game's 4 5 nothing easily, easily. Yeah, I, I am a f- – I'm a firm believer that players need rest. I understand that. Um, but when you're this tight in a race for the supporter shield to get that top spot, um, to finish above everyone else, to solidify your spot with the home field and everything like that, you cannot look ahead to games. Every game you're playing has to be treated as I have to win this game. 
Um, Villa played 70 minutes last week. He could have probably played another 10 minutes. I understand you want to save him, but you cannot save and concede games for games that you think are bigger. Because guess what? If Red Bull wins that game... It was for nothing. You know, what did you do? You just gave away three points. You, you didn't do anything. You, you you did absolutely nothing. So yeah, it, it's it's really, really comes down to the point where it's a mental thing now, and every game needs to be taken seriously. You cannot afford to pick and choose which games you want to show up for. Uh, if you have a game plan where you want to rest guys and move pieces around and try to play a little differently, that's fine. But you, you just can't be focused on Wednesday when there's a game Saturday. And it, it, you can see it clearly. It was just like – it looked like this game was not part of the game plan at all. It looks like they've been planning for Wednesday. And now look where it's got you. Now your plans are all crazy for Wednesday because you've got three or four starters missing. Um, it, it's it's not not a good look. Yeah. Uh, that that's it. You that's... can't do it. You can't. You cannot afford to drop points looking forward to other games because you could listen. Just because you don't beat the Red Bulls, don't mean that they can't lose a game down the road and you win that same week. Sure, you can get points like that too. So sure. don't you know? Don't let it fool you. I know you want to win. And I know it's important, but you know, winning every game is important because look, we're sliding. We are not playing well. Don't let the record fool you. We are not playing well. Our form is terrible. We've gotten lucky a bunch of games. And now at this point, you're sliding downward going into the playoffs. And, yeah, you might make it. But, again, you're looking at a one and out because it's it's the form. You, you really got to go in on an, on an uptick, and you have to be solid. And I just think there's, there's too much going on right now where things need to be broken down, and you kind of have to stick with something because I just there's too many moving parts. I, I, I just – I'm confused watching these games. I don't know who's uh, why they're tired or or just overstretched or uh, schedule. I don't know what it is weather wise. I'm not sure what it is, but something is clearly wrong. Yeah, and dude, I, I again, I don't know if it's a I don't know if it's a thing where we're now starting to feel the effects of the post Patrick Vieira swap. You know, because remember when uh, when Turin started, we had a good run of home games where. Listen, we're still undefeated at home, right? But the problem is that, again, if you have a playing game in the playoffs and it's not played at home, you're horrible if, you, if you've proven to have a, a poor away record. And I tweeted that out. I was like, man, better hope that playing game's at home because we're in trouble otherwise, right? Yeah, So, sure. you know, there's there's how many matches left in the season? You know, there's uh, nine, nine matches left in the season. You know, this is nine, ten matches, something like that. Uh, we're, we're down to the wire here, dude. This is... Every dude, every year, every year I say this, and I feel like I'm saying it every single episode. Our August is our Achilles heel. Our form in August predicts the form for the rest of the season. And right now, I am not confident that going into the rest of the season that we're going to be able to be a contender, possibly for even that third spot, uh, with the way that everybody else in the East is starting to play. I mean, there's teams that are starting to come into their own. You look at DC United, not like they're a threat for third place at this point, but I'm just saying, you know, you always got to worry about Columbus, you know? So it, it it's it's a matter of getting that form that we should have had already. We should have already been in this form. This, I think, is now we're starting to feel the effects of Dominic Turan and trying to change things up. And, dude, I'm sorry, like – we were fine defensively. We started giving up goals pretty uh, pretty recently. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, so. for sure, for sure. It's a, and listen, it could be a, a byproduct of training. Um, I, I think Turin's style of training, if I'm not mistaken, I, I, I'm reading it somewhere um, when he first came over, it's more high intensity. It's a shorter time period, but it's more intense and it's more grueling. Um, the guys aren't used to it. Uh, I mean, this weather is a huge factor. It doesn't get like this in, in certain parts of Europe, you know, um, it, it's the, the heat is not always a factor. The humidity is not always a factor, but here it is. And these are all but, things but that dude, need to be but dude, to why do other players not have a problem getting results? You look at it, Atl dude, Atlanta plays in freaking Atlanta and they are absolutely destroying Everybody's Joseph Martinez single handedly. Huh? 
They play inside. <laughs> the stadium's air conditioned. <laughs> Dude, come on. No, it's 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 not an excuse. Re- why is Red Bull not having an issue? Why is Red Bull not having an issue getting getting results on the road? They seem to be oh, getting results it. on the road left and Here's right. Here's the difference. Here's the difference. When you do it the entire year, you've built up that stamina. It's like weightlifting, you know. You could, you could, if you start lifting, Dude, we you know, lose, twenty-five. We didn't lose pounds. a game until the end of April, right? This no, season. But, but listen, you're you're talking about training one way. All of a sudden, your training regimen changes so drastically. Your body's not used to it, and it takes two to three weeks to get into that. You might be seeing byproduct of that. I'm not saying that's the the case. It might not be the case. But for me, I could totally see why. Yeah, that's you know, it could be an issue because these guys look exhausted. These guys never look that tired. These guys look like they've been run ragged, and I I don't know if it's if it's the training or if it's uh, what is it? I don't know what it is, but they look exhausted, and you can't look exhausted after forty five minutes of soccer. Mm. This is unacceptable. These guys on defense, they're just sticking legs out. They're just like they just stop moving. They they just can't. They look winded. Yeah, let us know in the comments what you guys think. Is this is this now the the era of Dominic Turin starting to finally come to fruition in that this is the time of uh, the season where NYCFC is finally struggling because of the change in personnel? Or is it the fact that we're having you know a lot more road games? Because, again, dude, we have no problem getting results at home. Uh, as of yet, so you know yeah. why is is this is this the effect of we're used to playing at Yankee Stadium, which is a significantly smaller pitch than most stadiums, is and that you know we've we've perfected how we play there, but when we go on the road, we're just not used to playing in that wide area. Is that why we see Ben Sweat playing more than Ronald Matarita uh, away Listen, than home? I mean, like it could be another reason why people are tired. You got more ground to cover in road games. Um, it's little things that could make a big difference. And it's not something that we could totally grasp a hundred percent because it, it, it's a bunch of different, you know, factors, but, uh, that could be one of them. It could very well be one of them. Uh, it's just, I, it, it's so difficult watching this team. And now listen, I mean, it's a down tick right now. And if it's a, if it is a product of, you know, Domez coming in here and changing things up and, now you're trying as long as you learn from these things and can correct them moving forward, we still have plenty fine. of time to come back. It's totally fine. And I don't mind if you gain, you know, you do something well, two or three things well, and okay, these things we're gonna maximize and we have to work on this. I haven't seen that too much yet, but if we do see it, I'm okay with it. But something has to be done where defensively playing too far, playing too deep, um, just pulling so many guys back and it's inviting onslaught constantly. It's, it's not going to happen. We can't play like that. We cannot, we don't have the defensive magnitude to sustain that for 20, 30 minutes for a half at a time. And yesterday, I mean, Saturday watching that game, it, it literally felt like the entire second half was just, you know, you know, great pass after great pass after charging towards the net and, and just opportunities just constantly. It's hard to counter like that because you've got too many men back. Uh, it's hard to get out of your own end because if you make a mistake, it's right back there in front of you. Uh, you can't boot it forward because everyone's playing defense, so you're giving the ball away. Um, and again, just a, a sloppy play is just unacceptable. Jimmy and on Facebook so is saying, that. Jimmy on Facebook says, I would hope professional soccer players can be used to a non Yankee stadium sized field as the default. Jimmy, I'm not saying that, you know, I'm not saying that it's right. I'm just saying that when you look at our road on our home form and you look at our away form, something has to change. I know obviously having a home field advantage is massive, right? But yep. why but why consistently match after match do we struggle? Even against Toronto, dude, when we were up a man, we looked like absolute garbage. So yeah. I don't necessarily, you know, like we we should have dominated that game. Um, I want to get to Zoran's comment here on Facebook says, I would definitely say stadium size and getting used to being a a smaller stadium has effect, but also different coaches have different motivations for different players. Here's something interesting, dude. If you, uh, read some of the quotes from Domez, uh, like Domez post-match quotes, one of them, and I could probably pull it up if I, if I wanted to, but I don't right now. Uh, he mentioned something about how he wanted his defensive line significantly higher. And they just didn't do it. So why is this team not doing what the coach says? Somebody's lying. 
Yeah. Right? I, I think Somebody's wrong. Who is it? Uh, I, I think it's a bunch of different issues. Um, maybe you have players that aren't happy. Uh, like we mentioned in the past couple of weeks, and there are you, are you doing it to be spiteful? I would certainly hope not. Um, is it just the way the game dictates the pace? Is it possible? It happens a lot. It happens a lot. And then, you know, it, it's really hard for a coach to yell directions at the entire field. You know, it's not like you have these timeouts where you can bring the whole crew in and say, all right, listen, we got to do this. Uh, everybody's got to communicate. I think you've got people uh, playing in spots where they're not that they're not normally used to playing, but you've got people constantly changing and not used to the guys in front of him. And, uh, you know, uh, the first goal given up, Chanel and Callens. Chanel didn't know where Callens was. Chanel was more worried about Callens positioning than worry about the guy with the ball, and they get beat. Uh, that can't happen. You know, everybody, everyone's got to be aware of their surroundings and be comfortable with the guys around them. And I think if you keep rotating and putting new guys in who haven't really paid their dues, uh, again, it's not really an excuse to me. I think if, you, if you're trying to win, you want the best guys out there for the job. And if you're not playing well, it's up to you to get back in that spot. But um, I don't want to make I don't want anybody making excuses here. You yeah, know what I mean? Because no, like because not, it seems like. It seems like we're trying to find the 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 reason why, and it's like, oh, it's the stadium size, oh, it's the humidity, oh, it's the quality of players, sure. oh, it's the new coach. Like, why why are other teams having no issue <laughs> getting well, results against teams, us? It's not that other teams are having no issue. I mean, it's just that. I mean, listen, we're we're a tough team to play against, regardless, but. Well, we will have our our opportunities where you, you'll have guys like Ben Sweat putting passes into guys' feet that are three feet in front of him. Uh, Medina, for for the love of God, when he has a, an opportunity to cross the ball, nine times out of ten, he hits the guy standing right in front of him. Uh, I I just don't understand that. It's that little final. It's that little final thing, and I I think it's a at this point it's a huge mental issue with this team where I think it's scared. They they have a first half like they had where they couldn't bury it, and all of a sudden it's like, here we go again. And then all of a sudden you give up one or two chances, and then it's like, really, here we go again. Mm-hmm. And it can be it can be really detrimental to you. And uh, honestly, I don't know what the what the locker room feels like after the game with Turin. Is he is he you know they they won that one game a few weeks ago, and he wasn't happy with how they played. You know that that might not be great for a team, uh, depending on how the locker room was before and after. Again. These are things that we don't usually hear, but it it, it could be a problem. Uh, at this point, it's, who knows? It's, it's it could be a combination of all these things we're talking about, and it's still not an excuse. Uh, these guys have to perform. You have to be better. It, it, it's just everything has to be better all around. Yeah, uh, uh, Jorge says Red Bulls also changed their coach halfway through, and they don't they don't seem to be having an issue getting results, whether it be on the road or at home. Only. Um... Well, two losses since uh, Armas started. One of the first one was actually to us, obviously, when uh, at Yankee Stadium when we beat them one nothing. But again, enough you know, enough excuses. I want I want to talk about uh, I want to talk about this game for a little bit, dude, because there were uh, several several things that we definitely want to talk about here. And before we do, I'm going to get to a couple of uh, I want to get to a couple comments here. Uh, on Facebook, dude. So Zoran is saying, yeah. I think we had enough chances to score, which would give us a mental boost. After those chances, you get scored on, and then it's hard to fight back. We seem to – I mean, I, no, I, I, I can't say that too much, dude, because we have come from behind uh, several times this season uh, to get the result, not only the, the draw but even the win. So I don't necessarily think that getting scored on is the issue. I think getting scored on twice is the issue. The, the, they, yeah. Dude, they just – they collapsed on themselves – when that second goal went in, it was just like, well, the hell with it. <laughs> yeah, it's possible. Listen, every team has say what you will. Every team has a different mindset after they go down a goal. It's just it, it's it's nature. You, the instinct kind of kicks in, and you're just like, okay, now it's not one, it's two, and it's hard to focus on just getting the one back. It's really difficult to do, and and teams. Uh, 
some teams are are better at messing it than others is what it comes down to. But most teams play differently when they're down a goal. Uh, an early lead can take the wind out of most team sails. Uh, and theoretically, you know, if you're going to give up a goal, give it up early because you have 90 minutes to kind of, you know, deal with it or, or you know, you know, some somewhere in that, that higher number. But the giving up a late goal is a little bit different. So uh, it's it's got to be a mentally strong. And, and again, I don't think we've really seen a game where we've gone down by two and, and been able to come back and, and steal a draw or, you know, get a victory three to two. We haven't seen it. I, I don't. I, it's a. It's a definitely a big character thing, but uh, maybe it's lack of opportunity to do so um, with the good home form and or just being completely awful on the road, uh, not even getting chances to score. I don't know what it is, but it's it's getting tough to watch these road games, man. It's getting really, really tough. It's like you're expecting it, and then, the same way I expect the result at home is the way that I'm expecting yeah. no result on the road. And it's like nice to be able to watch a team win. I mean, listen, we've had great games to watch the entire year at Yankee Stadium. But when you sit out at home and you change the channel and you, you, you get to the game and all of a sudden it's just like, where does the team go? Like, who are these guys? Do they, yeah. leave, do they leave their mojo on the bus? They left it somewhere because they certainly did not have it on Saturday night uh, for a majority of that match. So, listen, it's going to be – you know, it's really going to be hard, uh, depending on the result on Wednesday night, dude. That's that's going to be a big determining factor in, I think, the way the rest of the season is going to go for this team, uh, because, you know, not only is it the last derby match, but you know the Red Bulls are now ahead of us in the standings, and I think they have a game in hand, if I'm not mistaken. They do. They and. Do. Um, it, it, it's an uphill, it's an uphill battle. Uh, Roddy Russell hitting us with the facts, dude. All season, we have not been able to recover from a two-goal deficit. But if I'm also not mistaken, Roddy, coming back from a one-goal deficit, we've actually been able to come away with some wins, if I'm not mistaken. So I don't know if you checked that fact, Roddy, but uh, but thank you for get, giving that to us. We love Roddy. Roddy's the best. I know. He's like our fact runner, man. It's unbelievable. Uh, dude, so Philadelphia is able to put away two goals on us. I think we talked a little bit about the first goal from Corey Burke. There was just absolutely horrible, 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 horrible defending, horrible marking, and uh, it's just it, one pass, and he's in behind. We're we're running away line. from these guys. They're they're running towards us, and we're retreating. We're retreating to the point where, where are you all running into the net and making the wall? Is that what's going on? Someone step up and knock the guy down if you have to. Let him beat you. I don't mind if the guy beats you. Like, you know, like it or not, uh, the second goal, El, El Senior beat three guys, four guys. Now, they were a little lazy on it, but, you know, when a guy beats you, he's going to beat you. But you, you've got to be able to stand up and, and, and absorb some pressure. These guys are – the last couple goals we've been scored on, we've been retreating. We've been running back and scrambling and trying to figure out who's blocking who. And by the time we figure out who's blocking who, the ball's in the back of the net. In fairness, all credit to Ilsenio because, oh, dude. Terrible. Yeah, he was dirty. He made us look stupid. Like, I like, wash my underwear after that one. <laughs> my ankle was, was, was broken. <laughs> I was watching on TV. Like, wow. He was able to dribble through two defenders. Ben made Ben Sweat look like a fish out of water. That's a comment for Ben Sweat because he's a fisherman. And, uh, yeah, just just absolute Dude, he, he ben, ate Sweat. He ate ben Sweat. Up. Ben Sweat needed to square up and keep him in front of him as best Dude, as he possible. showed him the inside. And give him all the space. You just turn the wrong turn way. Turn the wrong way. That's, that's it. That's all it takes. But 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 you can't, you can't put all the blame on Ben Sweat because you had two defenders that were just – you know, had their shoes turned out uh, a four. It was one of them. Out. Suck their feet out like it's going to do something. Yeah, just uh, – Get a body in front of them. Get a body in front of them. A foot, not going to do anything. Unbelievable. So, but, yeah, but, get, up again, but again, credit to El Sino because sure. it was dirty. Sure, I get on them. Yeah. Absolute, absolute dirty. Absolutely dirty. Uh, dude, let's um... – <laughs> Jorge is saying, where is our petition for Mark ECO? That might be a conversation for later on. I want to get to the uh, – I want to get to the dude of the match uh, for this one. And, dude, what are we doing here? 
I, I, listen, it's definitely none of our guys. <laughs> none of our guys. Oh, uh, wait, hold on. Before we start debating the uh, due to the match here, dude, Roddy Russell coming to, us, coming to us with more facts. To add to that, every loss this season has been by at least two goals, and each loss has included the opposition scoring two consecutive goals. So when we get two consecutive, two unanswered goals essentially scored on us, Game over. we're dead in the water. Makes very sense. Makes total very, sense. Makes total very sense. Very interesting. Guys, Listen, put, start putting put character. Start putting in the comments uh, who the dude of the match was, and I don't think this one's going to go to an NYCFC player, guys. Spoiler alert. Uh, who's the dude of the match? Who was the who was the player that you think really impacted the outcome of this match in a positive way, not uh, not a negative way? Because the entire eleven would would get that. I'm getting a couple of couple of nods here for Sean Johnson, dude. Which um, I'm sorry, but I I just I just can't. He couldn't. He could not have impacted that match in a more positive way. Whether you lose two nothing or three nothing, we still lost the game. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, he. It wasn't like he saved the game. They still lost. So he. It's, our guys. And I'm telling you now. Just don't even vote for our guys because they're not gonna get. They're just not getting it. They don't deserve it. They're not getting it. Um, I'll give you choices if you want. You could do uh, Borek to Kyle, um, two assists on the night, uh, very solid game. You can give it to Andre Blake, who I, I honestly, I, I think he's just because he played for Philadelphia, and Philadelphia has been very poor over the last couple <sighs> seasons. Dude, he's a very very underrated keeper. Um, and then Corey Burke. I think Corey Burke was was testing it all night, and he finally buried his goal. So. Uh, those could be three guys you look forward to, but uh, don't give me anybody from our team because it's just not – they didn't do anything. They were awful. Dude, I, I have to – again, I think uh, I think the uh, – let me let me find it here, dude, while I'm trying to find my words here. Uh, DeKal had a great game, picking up two assists. Those two goals happened as a result of his pass. But I, I think just because we were made to look so dumb – Il Sino for me, and and the fact that Madrid almost broke the guy's leg, I feel like he should just get the he should just get it out of pity, and also because he was able to turn four of our defenders out of their shoes. Yeah, they came on the pitch and did did some good things. Um, I, that's fine with me. Again, I don't like any of these guys, so <laughs> doesn't matter to me. I, I'm uh, not seeing a I'm not seeing a lot of things in the comments. Uh, you know. About, uh, I'm not seeing a lot of things in the comments, you know, one way or the other. I think this is a tough one for people to vote on. But, it uh, is. Listen, nobody wants to vote on these when we lose because they suck. Well, they're, listen, they're awful. But, <laughs> but this is why we do them because it's, yeah. it is, it is completely, uh, it's completely unbiased, unbiased. right? I have no problem. <laughs> Jimmy McGuire says, I just, just give it to Joseph Martinez. That's really funny. <laughs> Even if it was a different match, it doesn't matter. Oh, Andres my... says the fans that went to that game. Yeah, I apologize on behalf of NYCFC yeah. for all those that traveled out to Chester, but, Pennsylvania. But I will say kudos to our supporter groups. Uh, we are slowly becoming like one of the top, if not the top, uh, supporters groups that actually turn up on away days. I mean, we have people going $10 tickets, far, man. far and wide. Uh, but it's not just a ten dollar ticket. It, it's it's the fact that you've got to drive, you've got to fly. I'm sure a flight to Seattle is not cheap. I'm sure a flight to LA is not cheap. Nah, sure. Yeah, you've got a good group of people going to all these. You had over five hundred and twenty people at that game last uh, Saturday yeah. night. Dude, I have a correction here. Listen. I have a correction. Uh, what do you got? Dochkal is Dochkal. the pronunciation. Dochkal. Thank you, Roddy Russell, again. I think okay. Roddy Russell gets dude it's of the episode. <laughs> um, let, let's just, look, let's just, can we wrap that up a minute? Let's, let, let, yeah, we, yeah, let's, let, let's can we give it that. to El Sino? Sure, give it to El Sino. That's it. That's give it. it. We'll give it to El Sino. El Lauren, update the Google Doc. El we El all Nino. sucked. El Sino didn't. He made us look dumb. Moderator almost killed him. And uh, in a way, that's something we have to get into. We go. Well, that's that's the next thing I want to do. Um, Matarita sees red. So, guys, I I want to be one of the first people to say this. Probably not the, one of the first people to say this, but I am very disappointed in Ronald Matarita. Yeah, not for not for stepping up to him earlier, 
but for blatantly being a jerk and going in studs up in the 95th minute, the game is over. You already lost. You came in as a sub. And you do that. Like, I'm sorry. Uh, to, uh, to answer uh, to answer Jorge's question here real quick, dude, uh, Matarita came out in the 65th minute. So he played for all but uh, – he played for like 25 minutes. I don't know. I don't know. No, okay. Oh, wait, wait. Uh, do, uh, now now I gotta, I'm getting to the comments here, dude. I'm sorry. Do it. Do Marcus it. on Facebook says, oh, come on. How do you get quote-unquote injured and then come back a few minutes later and run fine? What difference does it make? But that doesn't make a difference. What difference does it make? There that, is no – there is never a need – for you to go into a tackle trying to hurt someone. Josie was... Outdoor last week. Josie Outdoor. Clear intent to injure. Intent it. That's the whole thing. You should never go out there intending to hurt someone, whether they faked it or didn't fake it. You want to take it to somebody and you want to show them up, put the ball on the back of the net. That's what I said. Don't give I... that garbage. Thank you. Don't give me that garbage trying to hurt somebody. That is not the way you play. I, it's, this is not hockey where – even hockey, when they do that, they get up and they shake each other's hands. This is not like that. This is clear intent to injure. You could have seriously hurt him like that. And again, I don't like the guy. I don't really care for him. That is not the way to play. I don't like it. I've never liked it. There is no need for it. It's disgusting. Now, not only did you do that, you lost your cool there. You ended up screwing us for the next game, which we're already missing three people. So what good did you do? You re- re- you did nothing. You did absolutely nothing. I don't I only hear people. Well, the referee wasn't calling this so No, that does not give you the right to go out and try to hurt somebody. It's the stupidest thing you could have done, especially knowing that you have a game three four days away. At that point in the game, re- it's so stupid. Like again, you said it. You step up to the guy. That's fine. You want to get in his face? That's fine. The minute you turn that and try to hurt somebody. Literally, a minute. Literally, you try to hurt somebody, all goes out the window. That is total. That, for me, I, I, I've, that brought me down a little bit. And I get it. It's the heat of the moment sometimes. That's, I understand it. Still not, not the thing to do. And here's the other thing. Here's the other thing. Just going, just going back to Marcus's comment. I am not, I'm not faulting Elsino at all on this because. No. Everybody does it. We all do it. Right? We all do it. Everyone's so, hurt, and then they get up and score. That, that and They get up and run. Everyone does it. Get over it. It's part of soccer. You know, I, part this of the is game. not, you know, I'm not, I'm more, I'm more anti Monterita than I am pro El Sino at this point. You know what I'm saying? Like, this Listen, was just. And don't get me wrong. El Sino definitely, they both got their legs tangled on the sequence of, of play before. Dude, of course. And El Sino definitely took a chunk out of him. You got to be the bigger man at that point. Again, you're going to get in his face, get in his face, but the minute you turn around and try to inflict pain, you're in the wrong, and you need to know that. Yeah, I, 100%. 100%. David says, I wouldn't be surprised if he suspended multiple games for that tackle. I, I, listen, I tweeted this out to, to somebody uh, yeah, after the game. Yeah, he'll be fine for sure, and if it's an extra game... Uh, Dude, listen, if it's it. not an extra game, if I'm Dome, I sit him for a game. Yeah, After I mean, he serves I, a suspension. I'm sorry. Like... I mean, maybe because we just traded our other fullback, but um, you know, just give him I, look, he, uh, Marcus. Right Marcus again, not condoning Mata, just saying in general, all the time spent on that injury went nowhere, but it didn't. But it didn't matter, like that. You, you know what I'm saying? Games, like that didn't hurt. We already weren't playing. Yeah, it's not like it's not like El Sino hurt our chances of scoring. We did a good good enough job of that the entire match. So, you know, you know, El Sino killing off a couple of seconds that was just added in stoppage time anyway. What do we have? Five minutes of stoppage time in the second half. But, but that wasn't even the reason why for the altercation. The altercation had something to do with something later on. It had nothing to do with the fact that he could get up and, and, and run. Because we all – if any soccer player that sees a guy down and he comes back up and can all of a sudden run again should never be surprised. I guarantee you he was not surprised that he could pull those moves out. He got beat. He was sour. And then the second sequence of play, they got tangled up. He got a kick in the back of the legs, and they got into it with each other. And all of a sudden, after that play, the only thing that he saw, he bypassed one player totally to get around him, and he went for this. He went for his uh, his thigh with the, with the studs up. You could see the intent was there. 
It has nothing to do with the stoppage or anything like that. That has, that's totally different. Again, is it is it stupid? We hate it. Everyone Dude, hates I've, it. We, I've go, I went on my rant. Go go on yeah. go on IGTV. Go to our Instagram account right now, Marcus. After the show, go go on Instagram and and go look at our rant about time wasting from a couple of weeks back. It's on it's IGTV. Ridiculous. You can just go to our it's, Instagram and see that it's, because it's we're ridiculous. not condoning time wasting at all. I'm no. just more focused on the fact that Moderita made an absolutely stupid decision, cost him and his team uh, some serious issues because, you know, now he's one, like you said, dude, one of four players that's going to be missing the, the Derby on Wednesday night after, you know, three days rest. So um, it's just it's just so much more. Um, yeah, David is saying what made it worse was Mata saw the red card. He realized how stupid he was on the way he was holding his head. I'm sorry, man. Just, just, a, just a very, very dumb move. Just a very, very dumb move. Let's, um, let's talk uh, Hudson River Derby, dude, because we're missing uh, several players. Um, we're, 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 we're missing Collins for, I believe, a knee injury. We're missing Medina for a hamstring injury. We're missing Matarita because he was a bonehead. We're missing uh, Castellanos because of an injury that he suffered that he most likely will not be back, according to an article from Hudson River Blue. Uh, dude, we're thin for this Hudson River Derby. And um, fortunately, we got, uh, we've got Yankee Stadium on our side, uh, our record at Yankee Stadium. And uh, Amanda is saying, I'm quite nervous about the upcoming Derby. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Really, really quite nervous? It's quite really. Quite really. Uh, <laughs> Dome, has his, Dome has his things that he says a lot that are his quite really. He says, amazing. Everything's amazing. And everything's the most important thing. Watch an interview of his and tell me how many times he says it's the most important thing or it's amazing. Just oh, tell me that. But, God. dude, I, just going back to uh, Amanda's comment here. I am nervous about every game going into it now. <laughs> yeah. 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 Not uh, just this one. Yeah. This just happens to determine place and table directly. But at this point, we, I'm going to say something that's probably going to go against what our uh, our fans probably say here. But Red Bull's better than us. They've proved it time and time again. We've been outscored. How much to how much? There is no doubt that they have our number on the aggregate, on the on the grand scheme of things. They're a better team than us on paper and literally when, when they step onto the pitch. It's just simple numbers. Until that's proven otherwise, that's the way it's going to be, right? This game is an opportunity to prove against that. So accepting accepting what's happened in the past, I am no more nervous about this match than I am about any other one that's coming up. Whether it's DC United or whether it's a Western Conference team, I don't care. I'm treating every game as if there's things on the line because there is. Yeah, well, for, for sure. Uh, listen, they have a game in hand. Even if we win, they could very much still jump ahead of us when they play that game in hand if they win it. Um, that's the thing about games in hand. They, they don't mean anything unless you win them. Uh, so again, is it an important game? Yes, but they're all important. They're all leading up to a playoff where your form cannot dip. You have to be solid going in. And right now, uh, after that Toronto game, I'm a little shook. I'm a little shook. The, the, the team is not playing the way we, we've seen them play. We, we know we know of them to play. Um, we're seeing a lot of things being changed. We're seeing a lot of injuries now. We've loaned players out that we might like we might need. Like uh, for me, now you have if, if Collins is out for an extended period of time, you've got no backup center back. Yep. Uh, you can put Ben Sweat in there, but again, uh, not totally confident in the way he's been playing lately. Uh, your only other option you had was uh, James Sands, and he's not coming back until September, which is fine. Again, it's it's two weeks, but. Um, maybe they know this. Maybe he is the plan to be the center back depth, and they want to get him a few minutes in before he starts playing fresh here. I don't know what it is, but I read an article today, uh, or a quote today. I forgot where I read it from, um, on Twitter. Uh, why Turan is not playing, uh, Jonathan Lewis, uh, specifically in this game. Uh, he said he won't play the young guys when things are going bad. Uh, he doesn't want that to hurt their their ego, I guess. He doesn't want them to 
um, be thrown in a bad situation and fail and then have that hurt their ability going forward. I, I'm sorry. I don't buy it. Uh, I don't buy it. The kid's good. The kid's got energy. And when you need it, when you needed it the most, he's nowhere to be found. It's unacceptable. He, he's been here two years already. He's got his fair number of minutes under his belt. Get him on the field because he's done fantastic things when he's on there. Um, I just you got to give him a chance. Uh, you, you, you sometimes, you know, you, you can't always swim with swimmies on. Eventually, you're going to be in the pool without them, and you have to learn, you know, what to do. So you can't have this safety net with these young guys. Uh, you got to make sure, you know, you got to see if they can sink or swim now and then. And uh, if you're going to win, it's got to be all hands on deck because we just don't have the manpower right now uh, with all these injuries. Yeah, uh, I want to get to uh, Israel's comment here, dude. Uh, he says, I don't want to say this, but I'm not seeing this team winning on Wednesday night unless Dome needs to be in the face of all the players. Or better yet, Dome should get himself thrown out of this game. The way the uh, the way to get players fired up, I think, I think something has to do with the fact that um, the not that the team um, not that the team disrespects him by by any stretch of the imagination, but but that they need to open buy themselves in. up. They got to buy in. Yeah, to and buy. that's and that's really He's it. Selling. He's do we, have a, red, do we have a Red Bull supporter in the comment thread? Johnny? Johnny Pasquale saying New York is red. Yeah, okay. Uh, um, all right, Pasquale. I remember that one. Welcome to the dude remember that. there, Pasquale. You know, you know Pasquale. Your mom's favorite, Pasquale. Oh, <laughs> uh, listen. Come back oh, and my gosh. Going back to – we have we have comments going on right about the center back situation. Um we only what have we two available center back, Shano and Ibiaga, right? So I think you're going to see Alex Ring really drop back and be kind of like that fifth defender. Uh, that's for sure. But, yep. um, huh? Listen, I'm not thrilled with that, though. I'm not thrilled with, with the production of getting the ball uh, the past few games. Getting that ball from the back to the middle, is it's, like, it's almost non-existent. That second half was so bad. With the, they almost avoided them. They tried to avoid the midfield at all costs by launching the ball long. Just playing it long, sure. And sure. you can't do that when you're playing nine guys on defense. <laughs> you just can't do it. You don't have enough guys. You need like 16 guys on the field. Yeah. Maybe that's the key. Maybe that's the key. Let's just play the entire 18, field them all. Just field them all. <laughs> and maybe – We'll get back to play, keeping clean sheets again, uh, but I, I, don't know. I don't know. It's hard. This it, there are games that you watch where you think the team will never lose again afterwards, and then you'll see a performance like this one or the, the Portland game or any one of the road games that we lost, and you'll just be like, I don't know how this team won all these games. It's beyond me. Uh, again, the, the coach is, is is a new coach is always selling something. He's selling his brand of how he wants you to train, how they want to play, how they're going to move forward, um, how they approach, you know, uh, uh, managing the players and, and, and time and, and energy. Uh, if the players don't buy into it, 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 it's tough to accomplish anything. And I, again, I think there's a riff going on. I think there's a couple guys who don't get minutes, who all of a sudden have guys who have never been here before. Dude, Tati, they're perfect minutes. example. Yeah, and, and guess what? Maybe that guy that, that can piss a player off. I can totally understand that. I can totally it understand can, that. It can, but again, you've got to be able to put that on the side, train as hard as you can, try to make your way in, and when you're given an opportunity, take you it. Kill it. That's Just my like biggest, Jonathan Lewis, dude. That's my exactly. But otherwise, but does. Tommy Mack not killed it. Uh, Rodney Wallace not killed it. So uh, Chano, really for me, he's been a little off. Not killed it. And he's probably one of the ones that's the most pissed off because he was well, we the rock. We talked about that, dude. We yeah, talked exactly. about that. We don't know why he's getting the start, not getting the start, getting the start, not getting the start. It's like, and now all of a sudden we went from last week saying that, you know, maybe Callens should be, you know, subbed off and rotated. And now we have to do there that. There you go. We got to sh shut sudden, the hell up, dude. <laughs> now you're seeing a whole yeah, – yeah. right? Now we're seeing a whole brand new tandem right now of two guys who have never really played side by side. Uh Again, more communication problems that could arise. Yeah. It's it's not the ideal situation. Uh, again, there's so many issues with schedule and and uh, coaching swaps and things like that. It, it's really difficult. The only thing we can hope for is that 
every loss or every bad play is a lesson um and it, it's it's turned over into something positive before the season ends before the playoffs start that's it that's yeah, what you got to hope for and you hope for you in that time for. you don't slip too far down the standings yeah no, that's that's exactly that's, that's exactly issue. it um Dude, it's, we hit the 45-minute mark. We're going to add a couple minutes of stoppage hey, time here. Stop. Jorge right. says it's up to us to win by doing the wave. Jorge, leave. Leave right now. Get out. Get out. Get out. <laughs> Absolutely get out. Um, dude, well, what's, the, uh, what's the last thing you want to go over before we, uh, before we wrap this bad boy up? Uh, David Villa. Uh, rumors early this week or, or late last week um, – possibility that nycfc will not renew his contract um he might get a job with the club he wants to focus on his media company and his his academy um i would not be surprised if this is his last year just from being struggling with injury dude injuries and uh but again you flip the flip that coin and you look at the other side of it and it's do I really want to go out that way? Do I want to go out, you know, do I want to limp off the field or do I want to go out, you know, as, as high as I possibly can for me, I think he might want to go out as high as he possibly can. Um, could still very well happen this year, dude. Listen, it, it could absolutely. That's, that's fine. Um, but as far as next year goes, I'm just not sure. The only thing I am sure of is with the number of ticket sales declining and the interest in this team diminishing um, slowly year after year, you better have a huge name ready to fill those shoes because winning alone is not going to do it. Uh, if this team wins, if this team wins this year and next year we don't have a star player to come watch, I guarantee you it's not going to make any difference. Uh, people like winning when they. For this sport, it's a little different. People like winning, yeah, but they like it better when they're seeing somebody that can produce at a a 27-goal clip like Joseph Martinez. You better get somebody big in here that everybody knows that's got three or four years left that can stay here and kind of like continue the building process. Um, you know, via put up the structure, now it's up to somebody else to come in and kind of, you know – Keep building everything. Uh, Dude, I don't know. I, I don't know because I feel like you look at a team like Atlanta, when Joseph Martinez goes on to a bigger and better club and when Miguel Almiron goes on to a bigger and better club, I think Atlanta's still going to have their supporters. I think what I think what's really going to gonna turn things around for this team from from a standpoint of ticket sales and recognition is the, the first thing that can happen is win. That's the first thing that can, that, that can realistically happen is is win because like you know your uncle dom is asking for Lionel messi uh short no. short of <laughs> short of something like that happening winning is gonna is gonna attract more attention to this team oh, and it's an also, and listen i don't know i i uh, and we're, we're we're running late on time here but dude do you listen do, do you listen to the um uh, the state of the union podcast with uh, alexi lalas no okay <laughs> So I just started listening to it. If you guys haven't, uh, if you guys haven't, you might want to check that out. It's, pretty, it's a pretty good listen. He doesn't just necessarily talk about uh, U.S. soccer. He talks about soccer around the world as well. But he made an interesting point. You know, the the uh, the Wayne Rooney assist heard around the world from last week. <clears throat> we need players like that. We need players like Wayne Rooney, not not just to not just to fill seats, dude, but to produce the way that Wayne Rooney produced in that in that play. <clears throat> the reason why is because that kind of play didn't just get attention here in the states; it got attention all over the world because it's Wayne Rooney. And this was a point that Alexi Lalas was making. If 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 Frederick Briant made that tackle and that pass, it would have gotten around in the league, but it would not have gone around in the world. Yeah, or would have just it would have fizzled out <laughs> fairly quickly. But <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like it wouldn't get the legs that it actually had. And I thought that was a really interesting point. So yes, ne next yeah. to winning, dude. Next to winning, I think that that you do need those big signings. I agree. Let the kids play, but at the same time, you want to put out a soccer product that's entertaining to watch and that people know who the hell they're seeing. 
Because if you field a team of 11 guys that nobody's ever heard of, never you're, you're not going to drop 2,000 season tickets. You're going to drop a hell of a lot more than that. So I agree yep. with you in that on, on that standpoint uh, as well. So it's got to go hand in hand. If you you have to bring somebody in that's going to be able to <laughs> to perform. David, David says it would have been an own goal if Frederick Briot had kicked there you that go. ball. He would have yeah. kicked it. It's so mad. Oh, that's absolutely fantastic. Probably. Probably. Love it. Yeah, it, it's those two things have to go hand in hand, really. Um, you want somebody on your team like a Wayne Rooney, like a David Villa, that's going to kind of lead you to victory and, and show the kids, you know, how things are done and, and give them something to look forward to. Um, and then you trying to just ca- constantly trying to fill those shoes. Uh, it's still a growing league. It's still a league that needs a lot of marketing. And it's hard to market guys that nobody knows because, again, they might go somewhere else and just not be they, – they, they might not be the name that we know. It's Listen, still – talk if you talk to people in Europe about Christian Pulisic, they really – they don't realize that, you know, he's like, yeah, he plays for Dortmund, whatever. But here, he's like God. He's like soccer – he's U.S. soccer God. It's amazing, and I'm serious, and, I, and I'm, I'm a big – I'm a huge – Soccer card collector, people in Europe or who collect European cards are baffled by Pulisic and why he sells. They don't they don't follow U.S. soccer. They don't realize that he's the best player we have, and he's really not. You know, I mean, he's great, but he's not on levels that some of these other guys are on that play for Spain and England and things like that. So for me, you've got to get a name in here that's going to propel victory, that's going to fill seats. But at the same time, make get the your product results. on the field. Need make the to get the results. The That's it. Exactly what it is. And it's hard to find. So somebody better be looking, digging, and scouring and, and trying to entice someone that's still in their prime to get over here and be the next uh, be the next construction worker that builds, you know, keeps building this team. Because if you don't have it, it's it's just not not going to be good. It's going to be pretty ugly. Well, guys, thank you so much for spending this uh, this evening and this time with us for episode 119. Make sure to give us the follow on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We're at Dudes in Blue. You can also check out our uh, IGTV channel. That's a new thing that we're doing now. Uh, we're going to be posting more content there as well. And uh, leave the review on Facebook or iTunes, no matter where you're tuning in from. Uh, guys, we'll be back here. We are not – oh, we're not doing an episode on uh, Thursday night. This cannot happen. No. But we will be no, doing uh, one Monday night as normal. Yes, because we realize that there is no game after There's no Wednesday game over the weekend. Night, and we wouldn't have anything to talk about on Monday. So we'll let things progress over the weekend, and we'll kind of get all the results in, and then we'll have a nice big fat episode for you on Monday night. Fantastic. Absolutely. Well, guys, thank you guys so much for tuning in to the Dudes in Blue. It has been so much fun hanging out with you guys. Thanks for all the comments. Thanks for uh, Roddy Russell for hitting us with all the facts. <laughs> He's a yes, fact extraordinaire we will see you guys on wednesday come say uh come say hi if you guys are listening to this before wednesday night but new york is blue i don't care what anybody says it's still blue even if they do beat it's us sadness. So even if it's sadness even if it's right that's yeah. absolutely right guys i will uh see you guys on monday night dude i will see you wednesday until then yep. stay blue stay blue <laughs>